our distinguished guests. We, we're going to start off the panel discussion. I, I noticed from the opening remarks that there's a lot of reference to manufacturing, and that's in, in reflection of the theme we have for today's discussion, which is from made in Africa to made for Africa. Now, the, the, the basic background to this is, is the idea that uh, if you look at much of the transformation we've seen in the continent in the last decade, a lot of it has had to do with uh, African businesses being able to build new kinds of business models and operating models, new kinds of financing models and governance models that, quite frankly, have been able to disrupt and accelerate, uh, disrupt a lot of our challenges and accelerate the, the, the transformation process in ways that would not have happened if we had necessarily just adopted what quote unquote is typically called global best practice standards. So the idea is that if we want to move forward much quicker, there are some peculiar challenges in the continent that require that we are looking for a made in Africa industrial revolution. But in order for that to happen, we need to be able to innovate new kinds of business models and operating models and governance models and financing models. And, and that's the perspective we want to bring to bear on today's discussion. Um, the reference was made to mobile money. And it's obvious that Africa is the leader in mobile money, uh, not because we are the leader in digital technology, but that's because we were able to build unique models of using mobile technology uh, in ways that work for Africa. So if we want to achieve a made in Africa industrial revolution, what are the kinds of made for Africa operating and business and governance models that we have to invent in order for that process to be quicker? And the first question I would like to ask has to do with the CFTA itself. The CFTA itself, the way it is designed, can it be referred to as a made for Africa innovation? It, it, can we say that it is designed as a framework to enable the kind of made in Africa industrial revolution we're all aiming for? And I'm going to uh, ask Dr. Kituyu to kick off this, uh, on this question for us. About eight years ago, when we were looking at designing the architecture for CFTA, the first thing we were doing is looking at the architecture of regional economic integration initiatives, which is, uh, can we agree on um, mutually enforced reduction of tariff barriers for the movement of goods? Can we build into that exchanges on services uh, uh, trade? Can we build into that uh, a harmonization of external tariffs? The normal architecture of movement was a common market, similar to the European Union initiative. But however, there are some specific African phenomena that are already built into the CFTA. A first and important one, was a tolerance of diversity differential treatment in a breaking in phase. Understanding that a lot of fear remain to be conquered. Secondly, the reality that you are building a regional market without a regional infrastructure. Africa's roads and rails go from mines to ports. Now you have to start thinking about how to go from Africa to Africa. So the phenomenal upfront cost of infrastructure integration to realize an African market has always been a taunting challenge that was understood from the very beginning. So the CFTA is constructed as a starting point to remove impediments, to direct energies and investments, to look for innovative financing uh, mechanisms, to unlock the energy of African champions in a way that goes beyond the promises we've been making in the past. So as a starting point, it's important. However, my personal view, the experience of regional integration in Africa has had one weakness. The architecture does not have small and medium enterprises in consideration. Many times you're thinking about containers from one capital to another capital. We're not talking about the trade of border communities. We're not talking about the challenges of the small woman trader as a player and as an engine for creating opportunity. I think that discussion is not either or, has to be brought into the narrative at the right point. In the example that we've seen work very well in Southeast Asia. Okay, thank you. And uh, Chris, so 
the question of small businesses, and, and you work in the sector, uh, you have a firm that finances startups, and you work in the technology and digital space, where we have the bulk of Africa's emerging startups and, and small businesses. There's a lot of innovation and activity in that space. From where you sit, um, how do you see the CFT as an enabler of uh, growth for small businesses? And, and, and what are some of your expectations in terms of how you expect the CFT to, to, to drive that process? Thank you. Um, I, I think uh, the big difference between the digital economy and um, hardcore manufacturing is that the digital infrastructure is being built and being built very fast. Um, we have less issues to do with connectivity across Africa. And as been said previously, when you think about the fact that you have a, uh, a non-smartphone in the hands of many Africans, then a lot is happening there. And the financing models for digital business is across the globe. Now, we've got a lot of strides which have been made on fintech side in terms of mobile money or any business that can operate on applications. And so I see the CFT as a good enough framework to start, but I think there's a lot more discussion or thought that has to go through where most of the youth of Africa are spending their time, which is in the digital economy. And that has a lot more growth potential. And we need to look at that very carefully in terms of how the CFTA will enhance that. At the end of the day, the movement of people across Africa, between the borders, regionally and on the continent, is what's going to make the big difference as to where the youth are going to find um, their source of income and the source of growth. So I think it's a good start point, but we need to look more at the digital and the creative economies of Africa. Thank you. Uh, Jean-Louis, Jean you, you have served in, in both the private sector and in government. Um, and often there's a challenge in terms of alignment, in, you know, in terms of expectations of, 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 of private sector players and, and what government sometimes, the challenges that they have to deal with. You, you, you have been in both spaces. From where you sit now, um, in, in terms of the structuring uh, of the CFTA, uh, do you see it, and, and especially because you, you are into a business that is into processing, agro-processing, um, which is one of the critical opportunity areas for Africa. Um, what are your particular expectations in terms of, from, from your point of view as a business person, in terms of how the CFTA can be an enabler for boosting agro-processing, uh, which is very critical to Africa's industrial transformation? Well, well thank you very much. In, in my agro industry uh, business, uh, we are not only in the Ivory Coast, but al also in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Liberia, and hopefully uh, everywhere else where we can do it. Um, so for me, it's important, um, the, the, the CFTA. Uh, we can't do it without CFTA. We have too many bar barriers, and, and today, um, and doctor said, uh, the harmonization of rules, regulations. Uh, just crossing the Ivorian border to go to Ghana, the differences are big enough to say that we can learn together and be more competitive in the future um, just because I borrow from others what we can do in, in, my, in my own country. Uh, today, the port of Abidjan is like 59% uh, higher in, in cost than uh, the port of uh, uh, Tema, for instance. It's, it's, it's big. Every day when, when I export um, um, a ton of rubber, I pay $9 the, the, the kilogram in, 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 in Tema and 14 in Abidjan. That's the type of discussion you can have within your own government to say, look what they are doing just across the border and we, can, we, we have to, to benchmark and do the same. Um, you can have examples like this in many different sectors. Uh, I think the CFTA is made for the private sector because government do not trade we are the ones who are, who are going to, to, to trade in, in, in the future. That's why when the initiative, the Afro-Champion initiative came up, 
uh, with um, uh, President Obasanjo, uh, I jumped in the train because you, you mentioned my, my, my experience in, 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 in government and in, in, in business. Government think about their budget. Business think about how they can do uh, business easily, pay less taxes, and do it quickly. Uh, if you don't have an understanding, you will grow apart. It is time for us not to grow apart. And that's why we need to grab the leaders uh, who understand the game of business and uh, leverage on the CFTA. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Yilong, you, um, before you need to, had a lot of experience in uh, in China, work, working with the government of China uh, and advising, being a part of driving China's uh, transformation. A lot of that experience you have brought to UNIDO now. And African governments, African countries keep looking to China uh, and Asia for lessons and best practice models. Um, when you look at the way free trade agreements are done all over the world, uh, clearly uh, if countries are not manufacturing and processing enough, uh, it becomes a challenge for the free trade agreements to translate into impact. Um, There's a critical question I, 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 I want to take your views on. The way free trade agreements are done for industrial regions versus the way free trade agreements are done for non-industrialized regions. Um, should there be any particular differences? And should free trade agreements for non-industrialized regions necessarily be designed to drive industrial revolution, and how do you see the CFTA in that context and the way it's been, it's been designed and the process that has been put in place uh, based on experiences from elsewhere in the world and from the advisory work that you do at UNIDO? Are we on the right track? Is this going to be able to be a catalyst for the, for the sort of industrial uh, revolution we're looking for in Africa? Thank you uh, very much. Uh, I think this is a very critical points, uh, you join the CFTA or not join CFTA, uh, there's a big difference. But when you join the CFTA, it doesn't mean that you automatically benefit from this uh, CFTA because uh, if you do not have a capacity to connect it to the manufacturing trade, uh, it's not an opportunity. So uh, I, I believe this uh, CFTA will once again push ahead with uh, member states in this continent to achieve the 2063 visionary plan. This is uh, uh, the dynamism I've seen, but also uh, lots of things connected to the government need to have a vision to promote manufacturing, industrial development. And uh, PPP is a really public and private partnership. It doesn't mean that uh, either side can play the role separately. They need to work together. And the private sector will produce manufacturing goods like agro-industry, food processing, and the manufacturing. Uh, but they need the support. For instance, like trade capacity building. And uh, we need to let uh, the products, goods produced tradable. But how could they, those uh, goods and the uh, products be tradable as trade capacity building? Meteorologists uh, and the ca uh, quality infrastructure is so important. Laboratory certifications. Uh, I believe now that we, uh, 40 years, in supporting countries to build a capacity building in trade and laboratories, technician accreditations, certification are so important. Uh, those projects, programs supported by donor countries and by international community, development financial institution. 40 years we implement 8,000 projects in 80 countries with a total amount of 150 million US dollar amount. Those are the critical point, but at the same time, the products uh, must be green. Uh, this is uh, important. I have seen some countries talking about this e-commerce, and e-commerce is very dynamic. 
We understand mobile phone is useful. Uh, digital, uh, is, digital infrastructure is useful, but we need to apply it. We need to use it for our manufacturing, for our trade. So lots of things actually now will become uh, very, very important for uh, pub public and private sectors to moving ahead. So this is a really big event will push once a hand the trade, the manufacturing industrial development uh, for the country in the, this continent. UNIDO is always ready to support the country with innovative ways like a program for country partnership supporting the industrial development uh, in the country. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Samba. So, manufacturing is a big deal, um, but the data hasn't been looking very good for Africa in the last few uh, years. Uh, in fact, trade in manufacturing within Africa, intra Africa trade in manufacturing, uh, has declined over the last few years uh, from about 18% to 15% between 2010 and 2015. And, and this is a concern. Uh, are we going to uh, implement a beautiful CFTA framework that will open up the continent only for imported products uh, and manufacturers in other parts of the world to be the ones that come and take advantage of the open borders that we've established. You, as, uh, as a private sector investor, uh, you, you've, you've done projects uh, in infrastructure and in telecommunications and energy sectors. Uh, 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 the issue of industrial infrastructure is one of the key challenges uh, uh, holding back our progress on manufacturing and agro-processing. Uh, from, from based on your experiences, what, what are your expectations in terms of how the CFTA, in, in terms of how it is designed, can be utilized to help solve many of those bottlenecks? Thank you. I think uh, CFTA come at the uh, right time. And I will make it on, on three points. For me, in order the, for the CFTA to be successful, uh, first, we Africans, we need to think about creating hub according to our um, advantage. Uh, Africans need to come together, uh, decide which country uh, have to do what in which sector. I give an example. Uh, if we have to create hub, like uh, a cocoa hub, country like Ivory Coast and Ghana could be chosen to be the cocoa hub. Uh, in order, another hub can be like an energy hub, hydro, uh, Guinea and DRC could be energy hub for the respective uh, position, west and uh, central. I can name also Tourism Hub, uh, Cap Vert, Mauritius, Senegal, could be hub. The reason why the hub, project, hub is very important because all that we, we're talking about, we have to create wealth in Africa. We have to create wealth in Africa in order for Africa to grow. Create wealth and keep big chunk of this wealth. So we Africans, we all come, have to come together, government, private sector, financial institution. We need to come together and decide which country will do what, because we're talking about industry. Not everybody, not all the country could do industry. So we, not, we have to see the competitive advantage of the different country and decide that this country will do that and not that. So for me, that's key, the hub project. The second thing is uh, innovative financing for our infrastructure. We need to have an African approach with an international flavor. So if you take 
all our country, if you want to, if you want to develop uh, industry, we need to develop the infrastructure. So let's take the West African, West Africa region. What we have to develop like infrastructure in order to connect our country, like in railway, fiber optic, road, and have a mutual approach so in order each country to come with his own project. I give a, an example of success. If you take like OMVS, it's uh, uh, based in Senegal in terms of uh, uh, energy navigation. Uh, this is an organization today uh, creating this interconnection in terms of energy. Like uh, recently I was involved with the financing of a hydro project that just get, uh, fi the financing just get approved, 1.6 billion uh, hydro project in Guinea. Where when we start this project, one of the challenge the financier was telling us, uh, do you have PPA from other country? Because we know only Guinea could not uh, make this uh, project sustainable. So we have to go uh, across the country. Uh, Senegal, we signed some uh, agreement with Senegal, uh, Bissau, and, and Gambia in order to, 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 to export this energy. So the reason I'm, I'm saying that is we need to come together to decide what to do in which area. That will be very key for the development of CFTA. And in order to develop that also, we need to implicate local enterprise because most of those projects are executed by, by big multinational. So in order to create job and youth employment, we also need to bring local uh, into that process in order to develop uh, local employment and local capacity. Local content. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Um, we ran it out of time because the next uh, opening plenary uh, is just about to begin. Um, but we, 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 I'm going to ask our panelists uh, to make quick 30-second uh, 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 remarks each. Um, essentially, um, you know, the key, the key fundamental point here for us has to do with how do we boost manufacturing and agro-processing is, is going to be very fundamental to the success of the CFTA in terms of our ability to, to have real impact on the ground. Um, it's been the discussion that we've had, but I'm going to pick your closing thoughts on this. Um, what is that one made for Africa innovation, made for Africa business model, operating model, financing model, um, governance model, whatever it is that in your opinion uh, you would like to suggest should be uh, built into the CFTA framework uh, such that it can be a driver uh, for boosting a made in Africa uh, industrial revolution? Uh, I'll start with you, Chris. I think ultimately um, a crowd sourcing for finance model um, built for Africa in terms of being able to um, gather financial um, support from a broad base of, over the continent is one thing that is going to push the CFTA to the next level. Okay. I will focus on the digital All right. fintech. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Jean-Louis? Jean I think um, logistic competitiveness in logistic, uh, because at some point, uh, uh, transportation uh, is the common factor for every industry. So we really have to, 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 to boost it uh, on the entire continent. Okay. Air, sea, roads, railroads. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kiti? A coherence between trade facilitation and investment facilitation scaling up best practice, unleashing success stories to be Africa champions, having an ever-improving benchmark of governance. If you see how, what has happened in the European Union, there are key of rules, regulations, court rulings, 
kept improving the minimum standards acceptable. Africa must start benchmarking acceptable conduct by government, by institutions, by all players. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Yilong? Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, trade, when we talk about trade, don't forget manufacturing, don't forget industry. That is a starting point for trade, and also trade capacity building is uh, so important. Don't forget it. Thank you very much. Okay. Samba, 15 seconds. That one innovation. Innovation, bringing uh, innovation financing for the continent because all that we're talking about, the key will be financing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all very much. It's an honor to have you.